Hello everyone, uh, this is Dr. Nandal Pathak. Uh, so we have with us today uh, Dr. Sandeep Vishwas. So, we'll, so we are getting lots of questions regarding that our course, which is uh, facial release and uh, movement. And I'll be putting that those questions across to uh, Dr. Sandeep Vishwas. So he'll be uh, answering. And <clears throat> because there has been lots of uh, queries which have come in, so uh, we have just recorded this video and post it on different channels. If you have further any queries, then you can post it in the comment box on any of the channels. OK. So uh, yeah, uh, welcome, Dr. Sandeep Vishwas. Uh, so uh, first question that I want to start is that how important fascia is in terms of movement? So if you think about fascia, well, fascia is a continuous structure. It covers the entire body. So whatever you are doing with your body affects the fascia, and whatever the fascia is doing affects the body. So uh, let's talk about an example. Like uh, in, a, in one of my previous video, I talked about the posterior oblique sling, uh, where the latissimus dorsi on one side will work in correlation to the lat uh, gluteus maximus on the other side. So imagine you're walking. So what happens, this oblique sling will be involved in the extension of your uh, arm and extension of your hip, propelling you in you know in a reciprocative motion. So like this, you know all the structures on all the fascia in your body will form various force couples throughout your body, which will relate to your movement. Okay. Uh, so what what exactly are we talking about when you talk about again? Uh, there was in one of the videos we were talking about dysfunction, dysfunction happening. So how does how does the dysfunction formed in a fascia? or let's say in the body? Okay, well, yeah, that's a good question. The fascial dysfunction can happen due to a lot of reasons. Um, it can be intrinsic or it can be extrinsic. Uh, if we talk about the intrinsic factors, those can be, you know, like repetitive, repetitive movements or overuse sorts of injuries where you are, you know, using a certain body part again and again, sometimes in an improper mechanics leading to partial adhesion and dysfunction and pain. Um, and then there could be external factors like somebody undergoing an injury, which can lead to uh, partial dysfunction or surgery patients can have pa a partial dysfunction. So all these factors will, you know, at certain point of time or due to poor posture or whatever, you can have some kind of uh, partial dysfunction. Okay. Sure. So, so what I sense it, it is, is, is a different course in terms of people are not only concerned about that way, like they just have to concern about the technique, but also the assessment part. Okay, so anything else that you want to add in terms of how different this course is from any other course which has been there? Well, a uh, lot of courses people take are in regard to technique. So they learn how to release a certain tissue. Uh, well, there are a lot of techniques available like you know, soft instrument assisted manipulation, then you have dry needling, then you have partial release technique, you have MET, and you have various kind of soft tissue mechanics available in the market nowadays. But what's important, my point of doing this course is to make people aware of how to assess these dysfunction. You know, um, if you, might, you all might know how to release a QL, but it is important to understand when to release the QL. Is it always necessary to release the QL? Is the QL really tight? So the assessment is most important part of any any intervention you are doing. So it's not that you know you're just blindly going in and releasing a certain tissue. You should be there should be certain uh, hypothesis you're working on or certain assessment you are working on. Okay. Okay. So what what exactly is is your way in terms of that how you treat how you go about in terms of treating a particular dysfunction? So, if you can just share some of that. Well, uh, again, as I said, uh, most important part is assessment. Assessment. Mm -hmm. So you need to assess the tissue. You need to assess this partial patterns. Uh, you know, going back to our posterior oblique sling example, uh, suppose somebody is having a restricted flexion in his shoulder. Well, you might be working on the local tissues, doing all sorts of things, manual therapy, ISTM, or stuff like that. But there could be a correlation to a more, you know, global dysfunction of the uh, 
of the fascial structure. So the gluteus maximus on the contralateral side might be affected. So if you if you know that there is a correlation and you know how the force couple acts, you will work more globally than working more isolated on a certain tissue or a structure. Okay. Okay. I think yeah. That's that's uh, one of the last thing that I want to ask you is is what what exactly you want to say to people who want to join this course. Well, I would like to invite everyone if they want they are really interested in assessing these tissue dysfunction, knowing how the biomechanical aspect of fascia is. You know, it, 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 I'm definitely going to teach how I will release a certain tissue, but again, it's you, everybody has their own style and their own set of tools they use to, uh, you know, manipulate or mobilize a tissue. But I would like to welcome everybody to join in to see how these dysfunctional patterns work and explore all the mechanical as aspect of it. It's, it's, it will be a really interesting course where you will see how, you know, your lumbar spine or all the tissues around the lumbar spine get affected by dysfunction. Even if you might have a hip pain, the issue can be, you know, completely in a different region. We'll talk a lot about the thoracolumbar fascia how the various layers of thoracolumbar fascia correlates to the different soft tissue structure and medium to assess the different layers and to intervene in an appropriate way, you know, not doing a lot of tissue work in a certain session and minimizing your effort, being more scientific in what you're doing. Okay. So uh, again, just to sum it up, I will also say this, please join in for uh, our course. Uh, facial release and movement. Again, this is one of the newest thing uh, that you can learn and that you can uh, uh, use to improve your skill, improve your knowledge. Uh, don't think this as a standalone course. This 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 course will act as an integrative tool to everything that you know. You know uh, soft tissue release. You know uh, IASTM. You know cupping. You know dry needling. So anything that you have done till now that can be integrated through this course and and your techniques and you'll see that your techniques will be much much more effective when you apply on your patients okay Definitely. so with that yeah so with that a line on that is that yeah as you said that people will be more effective so that's the most important part when you know what you're doing is the most effective way of treating so you know know what you do don't do what you know okay so that's the most important aspect of this course okay Thank you, Dr. Sandeep. And uh, we'll come back to you with some more questions as and when people ask us. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Be happy to answer. Thank you.